Welcome back to my channel and today we have episode I believe it is uh, let me check my notes it might be 30 31 we have episode 31 of our crochet corner podcast for my new people who are here my name is Kai I am the host of the podcast here on YouTube thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me for a couple minutes on a nice Saturday morning and for my returning folks hey y'all welcome back we have a it's probably going to be a pretty I don't have too much to show as far as like whips go or I ha I do have some finished objects, but they're not like crochet or knitting. They are sewing finished objects. Um, so I just want to go right into um, it so that I can show you what I've been working on. So first, my lips are dry. Let me get some chapstick on. And this is chapstick that I made. Well, it's the scraps. I have some tubes. And I think I showed you guys that on episode, like, 29. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and start with my finished objects. I have two of them. And they are sewing. They are not um, crochet or knit. So, let me just grab that really quickly. Okay. So, I have been... Uh, um, I recently purchased a sewing machine because I wanted to learn how to make project bags because I really really love them thank you Miss Kim from the ones that she sent me I was like I want to learn how to make my own so this is the uh, um, project bag that I made let me see if I can puff it out um yes so this is the first one it is a drawstring project bag sorry dogs are barking but anyway it is a drawstring project bag with um what are these called handles <laughs> and then um i don't have any pockets or anything but this is what the lining looks like you guys can see it's super cute definitely riddled with tons of mistakes i mean guys look at this i want to say it is partly me being a beginner and part of it was definitely for sure the sewing machine so this bag was super easy to construct. I learned this bag off of a tutorial here on YouTube, which I will leave a link down below. And it was just so much fun. You just need um, fabric, interfacing, and you can whatever you want to use for your drawstrings. In this case, I used ribbon because it was the most accessible for me. But I know that you can use cord, leather, whatever you want. But yes, I learned how to top stitch, back stitch, stitch. <laughs> I learned how to thread for a drawstring. Um, I learned so much from that tutorial in doing this project. I am in love, love, love with, see, look random i am in love 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 with sewing and um after i show you the next bag i will let you know um what happened to the sewing machine but yeah i learned how to box box a bag and bring in the corners it was just so much fun and now i have a cute little project bag for myself and then i made another one this one is the the house favorite like, my sister wanted this one, but I couldn't give this one up. This one, I experimented with doing two-tone. So, on the front, it's blue with a polka dot strap. And on the back, it is polka dot with a blue strap. And I have this really nice fabric for the top with white ribbon for the drawstring. And then, look at this lining, guys. This is where I really made all the mistakes. Ugh. But, yeah. And then, hot pink lining on the inside. This bag went much better for me um, than the first one. It definitely, once I got the process down, I didn't even really reference the tutorial too much for this bag. And then I also did the interfacing better. For anyone who's not sure what interfacing is, that's just like some fleece or whatever you want to use that gives structure to your bag. Um, yeah, so it's on the inside. And I had so much fun making this bag, and I wanted to make more. 
So the next day, I pretty much made one a day. I started working on this one. This one, I did not do a strap. Because I found that, like, even when my sister was holding it, she was just holding it by the drawstring. So I was like, and then I really hated making the strap because it was just so fiddly. So I was like, I'm going to, on my next bag, I'm going to ixnay a lot of things. So I didn't um, put any interfacing in this bag. So it's not as structurally, it doesn't have, it's going to be more like a squishy bag. Um, this one I made reversible and it has a pocket on the inside. Um, but yeah, the process is still the same. I just didn't get to finish this one. So this is what the lining looks like. And it was my first time making a pocket, guys. Don't laugh. But yeah, I struggled with the pocket as well. But this is what it looks like. My pocket is lopsided, but it's on there. And I have a pocket. And I think it, this would be nice if... And I figured out a way. I'm going to try and do reversible bags. And then I'm definitely going to do a better job of making pockets. But the construction is the exact same with the corners and then now I can explain why this one's not finished so let's go ahead and just step into our whip corner and put these over there so I did not finish this sewing this bag because the sewing machine was just trash it was $70 on Amazon and I figured it was just a nice, um, sorry, my leg was itchy. It was just a nice beginner bag, a beginner sewing machine. And so I didn't really think too much of it until it actually got time to sew. And then that's when it was just unbelievably difficult. So I ended up just returning it and purchasing a better one. I am waiting on it to come in the mail. It said by um, September 17th, I should have it. And um, the first machine I had was called a KCP Tech um, 51501 off of Amazon. Don't buy that one, guys. It's, I spent more time threading the needle and fixing jams than I actually did sewing, and it just made it too difficult. This next machine I'm getting is called a Janome Mod 30, which I did a lot of research before I got it, and it is a very nice and sturdy machine because I don't want to just make project bags. I want to make all types of bags, so I need something more heavy-duty. And then once I get my Janome, I will definitely finish this one. I need to finish top stitching around. That's literally the only thing I need to do. I need to finish the top stitching and then I need to of course attach the drawstring but I didn't do that because I want to finish it all in one go so that is it, it for my sewing whips I did not work on the other two cardigans so the only other work in progress is I'm going to show you today will be socks and then some updates on the cardigan that I'm making so I'm going to start with the socks after I get a sip of my drink and this is just water in my bubba cup that I got from Walmart and I like this cup because it's really heavy duty. It keeps 24 hours cold, 6 hours hot. And then it says Bubba on it. Bubba is my little brother who is currently serving in the military. His nickname. So it reminds me of him. My Bubba. Love him. Um, so this is where my pink socks are in this project bag. Which I have now. I made one. So when I cast on more socks, I can put them in two more, three more project bags. But yeah, I think, in my opinion, I did good on my progress. So you guys know in the last episode, I moved my progress keeper up, and this is what I have knitted so far. That is not bad, guys. Not at all. So like I said, I'm just doing a simple sock. It has 2 by 2 rib on the front, and then just straight knitting on the back. And with this... I know I was kind of going back and forth with it yesterday, but this sock for sure, I found a good tutorial. I'm going to do a, um, excuse me, sorry. I'm going to do a heel flap and gusset. So let's move our progress keeper up. And maybe by the next time you guys see this sock, I will be making a heel. Um, I'm almost done knitting the foot. Um... Of this, it's coming along really well. This yarn is just amazing. I love everything about it. I think it looks super duper cute. And this is the Premier Yarns Wool Free Sock 
that I'm using and yeah so that was the progress I just moved it up so by next week I think I'll be able to start the heel for this sock and then I just have two of the yarns um because I think I, I had one ball but I caked it up into two so I was going to try two at a time sock knitting and I just keep that in the bag I don't necessarily know if I'll have enough for another sock um, I'll just have to see if not I'm probably gonna have mismatched socks because I cannot for the life of me find this yarn so with that being said I'll definitely keep you guys updated to see if I can find the yarn and then I'll definitely get me another ball so I got this actually from Hobby Lobby but I think I might have to go online because I did go to Hobby Lobby to check to see if maybe they had some more <gasps> in stock but alas i don't think that they did and then i'm just moving this stuff sorry so that i can reach everything i'm gonna have to eventually get up and get some of that stuff but not for right now next is the crochet sweater that i was making which is in this hobby bag hobby project bag and this one I think I'm going to have to rip out. So I was explaining to you guys how I was going to do the front panel. Well, I did the front panel for one side. I um, just con I measured like an opening that I needed for my neck and I attached two stitch markers. Well, I, I removed this one because I already I started on the second side. And then I crocheted down until I had a good enough armhole. And then I increased so that my front panel would match the sides of my back panel. It's just too short across this side. And then the, I don't know what I did, but the stripes didn't match up on the sides. Wait, hold on, let me try to show you guys. Can you see? Yeah, the stripes didn't match up on the side, so I just need to, I'm going, I already sewed up this one side just so I could see what it would look like. I'm going to rip that out and I'm going to reattach it so that the stripes match up I don't and then I'm going to there's nothing I can do to fix the fact that it's so short this way that it doesn't fully come up like it's not too bad it's more like um it doesn't come as far as it kind of like stops here like right here and I don't think at this point there's anything I could do because I did alternating colors so I like for every single row I cut my yarn and I don't want to have to you know so I'm not going to so I'm going to do a really long shoot neck band I mean I gotta figure that out because I do want it to come in a little bit more but yeah I need to rip back for sure for sure so that when I um, sew it my uh my panels line up like we're gonna we need this with this and this with this so that was that so i just kind of stopped working on that for a little bit i did start the other side to start working down the other side but i needed a break and this is made out of um so the white is mainstays yarn in white and the colorful is uh, Red Heart in Bon Bon, which I did order more because I plan on doing a hood pocket. And I think I'm going to need more yarn for that. So I have currently two unopened balls of Bon Bon and one that I have attached. And then I just have that one skein of white because I went ahead, dog, sorry. I went ahead and purchased, um, well, you'll see it later, but I got more white yarn, so I needed more bonbon. And then if I can, um, I think I want to also make some accessories, like a matching hat, because it is going to start getting colder soon. And I definitely want to have this ready to wear um, when it starts getting colder, for sure, for sure. So, next is um, I'm done with all my whips and I'm done with my finished objects. Like I said, um, I didn't work on those two shawls at all because I was just obsessed with sewing and I was obsessed with making my cardigan. And then I threw some sock knitting in there, <laughs> which was really just last minute because when I sent the sewing machine back, I was just devastated. <laughs> so I was just like, mm, let me just work on this sock. And then, I didn't even mention in the beginning, I am wearing this cute bonnet that my sister gave me. I did not feel like doing my hair. That's why I've been wearing head wraps in like almost every video. So it's like I'm going to film in my bonnet. So 
that's what we got going on here uh, so next I just want to get into things that I have purchased because Hobby Lobby had a sale on yarn and they also had a sale on fabric so I want to show you that and then there's also some new and exciting yarn I found at Walmart that I want to share with you guys that I did pick up so let's get right into it all right so first I'm going to start with everything that I got at Walmart which is surprisingly a lot um but first this is what i was talking about earlier how i purchased more white i just went ahead and picked up this jumbo skein of white from red heart um because i also am going to be doing i'm sorry it's the bag <laughs> i'm also going to be doing stockings and i have eight nine okay so i have eight uh kids and then there's my cousin so that's um, 12 so I have to make 12 stockings for kids this year I need to start now um, so I'm gonna need a lot of white yarn and then I might make some for the grown-ups I haven't decided yet but I just might so I just needed to go ahead and just get a jumbo skein of white yarn I also got this this is called mainstays and it's in the color, this is the Walmart brand yarn. It's in the color purple multi because this is what um, one of the kids, my cousin Sophia, she requested it be made out of this. So I got this for her. And then with her sock, I bought some Red Heart Super Saver Metallic. It's a sparkling yarn. So this is specifically for her. And I might, because there's um, five other girls. That I make it stockings for so I might do theirs out of this and then do the boys and if I choose to do the adults I'll do the boys and the adults out of this and I also bought this set with my cardigan <clears throat> then I saw some beautiful yarn from Premier it says serenity and it is a bulky five weight yarn and I got it in the color I think it's just white yeah, I just got it in this white color. And then I also got it in this gorgeous, gorgeous color. It is called a uh, color Cat's Cradle. And it's beautiful. And they said this is best for making blankets. I haven't made a blanket in a really, really long time. So I thought, hey, let me just get some bulky weight yarn and make a blanket. Um, so that's what I got those for. I don't plan on working on those right now. But I definitely... Oh, this is this color is called Cloud Dancer. I just found the name. But I do plan on making a blanket with these two yarns. And I think it's going to be perfect enough. I'm going to do some stripes. So I think it's going to be, sorry, the perfect size for that. I don't think I'll need to go and purchase more. I might because it's really soft and I really like the way it lo looks. But for right now, I'm going to keep it simple, okay? Um, next on my Walmart purchase is fabric. And I have the fabric between two bags because, you know, I was sewing. And I started off first with... Just some simple fabric, like I just bought um, just regular, as you can see, regular blue. Um, this is the polka dot that was on the blue bag. This is just like a strip. I just bought regular gray, um, beige, and I just got some pink. So I just did really nice solid colors. To practice on and this is also the fabric that I had when I was um, doing sewing the lining for last year's stockings and here's some more of that beautiful um, it's not polka dots it's triangles but it's not like in a polka dot fan, like pattern it's but so I, I just be calling it polka dot <laughs> and I also got some ribbon this is what I was using for uh, these straps and it's just in a pink color it is um, 18 feet and 7 by 8 inches and I also got that another one the same brand but in white I do plan on getting more ribbon oh it's upside down but <clears throat> those are the two colors I wanted now I also got more of that triangle polka dotty color but it's just a darker print so the other one was light triangles, and then I got the darker triangles. I, you, pro you guys probably cannot see the difference, but there is a difference. This one's more like gray, and these ones are black. 
Um, so that was the first purchase when I went to Walmart. Well, everything except for the beige color. The beige color came last. I just had to cut them up because I was planning on making another bag, but the sewing machine said no. Um, the second time I went to Walmart to get fabric, I did pick up the beige. Um, I picked up the beige color like I showed you. And this is just like my practice scraps when I first got the sewing machine. I don't know why I'm keeping on to that because I was just so like, oh my god, the sewing machine. I I like this yarn. It's called Waverly Yarn. And I just got some pre-cut cotton. It's 100% cotton. And then I got it this color. It is like blue um, with polka dots, leaves, and white. I got this one it is like a lavender floral type but it also ties really nicely into this the first one that i just showed you guys and this is all by waverly by the way if i didn't mention it before and then uh, because i am a floral uh you're I'm not gonna say what i was gonna say but yeah i did uh i got some floral colors this is just called fabric cut this is not waverly or anything but I got this pink floral. You guys know pink is my jam. For sure, for sure. And then I just got another pink floral from Fabric Cut. 100% cotton. But it's more of like, it has greens and beige. So that's why I bought all of that gray and beige yarn. Because I bought all of that with, um, this is also two yards of gray from Fabric Cut. The beige is two yards. It's from the same company. And the pink is not from fabric. Yes, it is. The pink and is uh blah, blah, blah. the pink is from fabric cut as well, which came in two yards. And then the, the uh, triangle, the light and the dark triangle, that was just what was on a shelf. And then I had to have them cut a yard of each for me. Okay, add that out of the way. I was shopping with a color palette in mind. So this is one bag lining lining outer uh, lining top part for the drawstring outer or you know i can interchange both and then let me grab the beige so that you guys can see and then this was the second color palette for the same thing which of course will be interchangeable so these ones i definitely shopped for um with a bag in mind and that's why I keep them separate from the other ones because the other ones are kind of like my, uh, you know, my, I'm going to just put anything with anything fabric, but these ones are specific bags. Sorry guys, I'm hitting the table and shaking. So that's that. And on that, next I have, uh, before I get to Hobby Lobby, I actually went to this uh, quilting uh, fabric shop called, um, so yeah quilting right here in vegas and i picked up some fabric from them this fabric you guys have already seen i got one yard of each um this is the fabric that was on the inside of the first bag that i made and then on the outside of the second bag it was it's so beautiful $6.99 a yard and i wish i had got more so i think i'm gonna make a trip to them soon and get some more if they still have this because i love this fabric it is beautiful i also got some fun stuff this one was so cute i should have bought more of this but i was like let me just experiment and see um if I even like it. I got this. This is cute. This is what uh, was on the outside of the first bag. And then on, I mean on the end, no. Yeah, on the outside of the first two bags. For sure, for sure. It's beautiful. And it was also $6.99 a yard. So I've kind of been scrap saving because I love it so much. And I'm definitely going to have to go visit So Yeah Quilting to see if I can get some more of this. I am in love and sorry guys it's my lighting is bad so the camera is not picking up the beautifulness I also purchased some interfacing from them um, which is here but I don't have any more of this so that sucks but I've been holding on to the bag and to the yarn I mean the yarn and to the fabric 
because I love it so much. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with Walmart fabric. It's actually more cost effective because that was really expensive. Whereas I got all those two yards fabric. I spent like $15 and I got six yards of fabric. Whereas for $6, um, well, $12, I only got two yards. So you definitely want to see what best fits your budget. For me, that is Walmart. And then the Waverly fabrics, they were like $5 for a yard. So um, next is my, I want to show the yarn I got from Hobby Lobby because they had a sale on Patton's Croy. It was reduced from um, $1. I always buy candy from Hobby Lobby. All bad. I forgot that was in there, but it was reduced from $6.99, which is what I usually pay for that to so, you know, I had to get me some. So, I got, and I, I didn't go too crazy. I didn't clear them out or nothing like that. But I got two skeins of Singing the Blue Stripes from Patton's Croy. You guys know this is my favorite, favorite, favorite Patton's Croy yarn. I got two skeins of, let me see what the color name is this, of Tur Turquoise Jacquard. I got two of those. Okay, and then I got two skeins of this FX. It's Patton's Croy FX yarn, and it's called Cameo Colors. I got it because it was totally my aesthetic. It's got purples, blues, pinks in it, and it was $1.99. And I never seen their FX yarn before, so I really am interested to see how that knits up. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Hobby Lobby, for the sale. No, I did not need any more sock yarn, but I will take you up on your offer. And um, I was able to use my, um, oh, what did I use that on? Was I able to use my coupon? I think I, no, I wasn't. I wasn't able to use the coupon. It's okay. Because um, that's the only thing I got. I thought I had, that was the second Hobby Lobby trip. So, on my second Hobby Lobby trip, oh, I also, from Walmart, I missed it. I got this sewing kit. That's another thing with the freaking um, sewing machine is that I got all these nice, nice, nice colors to choose from. And the little spool thing, like that feeds the machine, was too small. So, these didn't fit. I had to resort to using these, and these are smaller with less uh, less thread and they were running out really quickly but yeah it has openings here it opens here it has a bottom drawer where to keep the scissors the measuring tape and my um fabric pin oh it's all the way in the back which i got from soya quilty and then it also has a drawer here or which is removable and it opens up this way and I keep my um, hand needles. These are what are paper? No, paper clips. Safety pins. Um, these are pin pins, which I really don't use. And then over here, these are extra bobbins. But I bought the wrong one. These are for a singer machine. So I'm hoping when I get my Janome, I might be able to use these. But if not, it's no big deal. It's nice to have them. Um, what else? Oh, and on this other side, it has buttons. Buttons, and I don't know what these little clippy things are, but I probably will never use those because the buttons are really small. And I haven't learned how to... Oops. Oh, oh, shoot. There we go. Put applications on yet. Oh, I wanted to shout out on this end... I have my clips which help me clip my ends together when I'm sewing. There's quilting clips, but I just use them for whatever I feel like using them. And then I have a extra um, yarn spoon thing. Yeah. This actually came from the sewing machine. I just forgot to put it back when I sent it back, but I don't think they'll be noticing that. So yeah, that is this. Okay, I'm gonna take a candy break. Guys, it's it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm finna eat a pea tree.
I forgot about that poppy. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So next from Hobby Lobby is the fabric because they have 25% off on their fabric. So your girl went a little crazy. Um, oh, this is from Walmart. This is fusible midweight interfacing. This is what you use for the bags. I plan on just probably purchasing it by the yard. Um, I'll probably get a heavier weight interfacing. But, yes, because you could just iron that on. Let me just take these out of the bag. Um, I don't want to show you guys yet. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, so let's start off with the, actually the things that I got. So I got a bodkin, and a bodkin is what helps you thread stuff. So like, I didn't use this when I did the drawstrings, I just used the safety pin. But if you get a bodkin, um, it's easier and the thing is longer. And then you don't have to worry about the safety pin opening and stabbing you in the fingers. Anyway, so yes, I got a bodkin from Hobby Lobby that I plan on learning how to use so that I can thread stuff. Yes, yes, ma'am. So that's my bodkin. You see, you just put, I'm pretty sure you just thread it through here and then you squeeze it and then you put this down to hold it, this little ring. Let me actually put that in my sewing kit. <laughs> Everything goes in here. And I, I wish this was in pink because, you know, pink is my jam. But this beautiful mint green is A-OK -okay with me. And then I also got a ruler because I was trying to do everything with a measuring tape. And it was bad. And all my stuff was lopsided. So I was like, let me go ahead and just give me a nice ruler. So I got an Omni Grip. 3 inches by 18 inches, so it's 3 inches across, 18 inches down. Um, um, grid measuring ruler. And I've been doing research on how to read them. Not too familiar on how to read rulers like that. I'm just being 100%. But I got this one to help me get straighter and neater lines. And my next purchase is going to be a rotary um, a rotary cutter. Because it is absolutely hard to cut with scissors and get nice clean lines. So these are the investments I am making into my sewing journey. Because I love it guys. I'm addicted. So I have that. I wish it would fit in my little thing, but it won't. Hold on, guys. That peach ring is good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then next is the fabric. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five yards of fabric. Each of them are one yard each different cut I have this beautiful polka dot oh come on camera come on oh there you go guys you see that polka dot you guys know I'm a I'm a pinks pastel light type of chick floral you're gonna be surprised about how much floral you see and then random polka dot um, more floral but with, it has lines in it, which I did really like. And I love the flowers. Oh, more floral. But I like it has these nice, gorgeous pops of blue in it. And then, oh, more floral. But it is like a gray blue and has some nice reds in it. So that is the fabric I got from Hobby Lobby. These are all going to be nice, beautiful, gorgeous project bags once I get my Janome machine. And I am so excited. I just like over here pre-getting everything because I am just super excited. And like I said, that came from Hobby Lobby. I might have to go back and get some more fabric to see if they're still going to be on the sale. Because it was a really, really, really good deal, guys. I probably should have maybe got two yards. But um, the thing is, is, I can only really... Two yards is, is too much to work with for me right now. Like, I get really overwhelmed. But I know once I get... Excuse me. Sorry. 
apologize once I get the rotary cutter it'll definitely be easier and then um, once I because I have been learning off of YouTube and just some Google searches on the best way to cut fabric read rulers and things like that so I'm definitely getting better and each time I cut fabric and do a project bag it's been way better than the last one because I have a more better understanding of, of how to cut the fabric and taking the measurements for cutting the fabric so um, but for right now I just work with one yard increments which definitely for sure for sure has been working for me my next sewing project is going to be um a christmas gift for my friend she loves harry potter just like i do i'm a hufflepuff she's a slytherin so i really want to make her like something slytherin related i was looking into maybe doing some mittens um because like I said, one of my goals was to make mittens. I think I said that in our episode 29, either 29 or 30. I really want to learn how to make mittens. Um, but then I was like, well, now that I'm getting better at sewing, I could probably make her a nice little bag. So that is definitely the goal. I can't wait to get my machine and I'm definitely going to start that process. Um, I have not given up in on any of my whips. You guys see I've been knocking my um, socks out of the park and then I have been working on my cardigan. I just need to work on those two shawls because I think that if I can finish the not the bigger shawl the but the mandala shawl and genie i can give that to my mom because that'll be a really nice gift for her um but with that guys that is it for all my works and progresses um finished objects and my stash equ inquisitions <laughs> um i want to talk about something that i mentioned last podcast where i said i think i want to do um like a whip buster um weekly bi-weekly i'm not sure um live stream i am leaning towards a weekly and this is why so i have a tentative date i want to do weekly live streams at um 5 p.m pacific standard time every friday and it's just one hour where you guys will grab whatever project. It doesn't even have to be a long languishing whip. It can be a project that you really just want to get done. And you can dedicate one hour of your time with me on Fridays. Um, and we will just chat. We will work on our projects. And then it'll go on until the end of the month. And you will be eligible with your participation to win prizes. And I think that that is so amazing. Um, I am super excited. I'm definitely, it, once I get your guys' opinion and see who is wanting to participate, I can definitely for sure, for sure get that started, start getting some prizes. And if anyone wants to donate prizes, just reach out to me either here on YouTube or Instagram. I also have an email all in the description box below. And we can get this started. Uh, we'll probably start it in October, which will be nice because you guys can do... I know um, it's... It is... Hmm, I know fall starts on the 21st of September, but I didn't come up with this idea in enough time to start it in September, and I don't want anyone to feel rushed, and I don't want to rush myself. So I'm thinking if I can get enough feedback and enough participation, we can do that in October. So October, let's see what the first week of October is, what date that is, that first Friday of October. Oops. Let me go to the calendar. So October 2nd, and so it'll be October 2nd, 16th, and the 30th, and then I will be giving out prizes every week. So the first prize will go out on the, um, sorry, I just totally skipped the heck of Friday. So October 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, and the 30th. Yes, that is a Friday. One, two, three, four. Well, maybe we'll do it. Well, October's going to have a long week. But either way, it's going to be every Friday <laughs> of October. Starting October 2nd. Because that is literally the first Friday of October of 2020. So that's what we'll do. And then um, the last pod. And each week, a prize will be given. So I won't be giving out prizes on okay scratch that 
yeah i won't be giving out prizes on the very first one because you know we need to progress so what you guys will do is once we start on the second you have um until the ninth um you guys can submit progress update pictures to me so what we'll do is i'll open up a thread i'm not too sure how many people are on ravelry but i'll definitely get back into ravelry i'll open up a thread where you post what your project looks like before then we'll do our live stream on Friday. And then on the next week, you have that whole week. So be from the 2nd of October to the 9th of October to go ahead in that Ravelry group and put in your progress, your update. So if you want to use stitch markers to show your progress or if you want to use um, actual progress capers or however it's going to show the progress, you will automatically be entered in to win a prize, which will be announced on the next pro on the next um, live stream that we do. So it's pretty simple. So um, if you start with this on October 2nd, October 9th, you have the chance to win in a prize and so on and so forth. And we will continue this. If you guys like it, we can do it every month. Um, just let me know. I'm really excited and I love the fact that, you know, we can sit down for an hour, talk about our projects. You guys show me what you're working on. I can show you what I'm working on and I think it'll be really fun and you get to win some cool stuff. Might throw in some project bags made by me. Not saying that they'll be made very well, but it's a hand gift from me to you. So yeah. Tell me what you guys think about that in the description box below, and I will definitely get that started for us. It will be under the social hour um, because I think that's just the most appropriate place to do so because the social hour is supposed to be an hour of me talking anyway, and I only really make it to like 20, 20 something minutes. So we'll do it under the social hour which is the segment that I have here on my channel. And then it'll be every Friday starting October 2nd um, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is tentative. So if you have any, Friday is not tentative. Friday is the day. I'm not going to budge on that because that's the day that works best for me to do it because I work Monday through Friday and then I have podcasts on Saturday and then I have um, the uh, Let's Talk on Sunday. So I don't want to do it on the weekends because I'm already having two things that I'm doing those days. And Friday is a nice wind down day for me because I don't have to work the other two days. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I am willing to negotiate on the times. It can be any time after 3.30. So if you guys want to do it 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, those are basically my time frame. So anywhere between 4 o'clock and after, if you that works best for you guys, we can do that because I get off of work at 3.30 and I'm probably going to need that extra 30 minutes to prepare. Or maybe if I get off later, I still want to have time to get ready for you guys. But yes, let me know what you think estimated time of doing slash arrival it will be october 2nd um and with that that is all that i have for you guys today i am extremely happy to be here with you um i want to thank everyone who has been supporting my channel and watching my channel i do have an a thousand um subscriber giveaway in the works once i get everything together with that i'll be discussing that with you as well and how you can enter and win some cool stuff so stay tuned and if you have any questions about show notes things that we discussed where i got the fabric yarn all of that and you don't want to rewind check the description box below because it'll all be posted in the Oh, excuse me it'll all be posted there as well as ways that you can get in contact with me guys please leave me feedback of what you think about that social hour um starting october 2nd so that we can get that started and then i want to thank everyone for sitting here with me and i hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day i will see you in the next podcast mm -hmm.